welcome to Evolve and Element. Please share your name and tell us why you're here. Hi guys, my name is Alice Huang and you can also call me Shi Ming and that's my Chinese name. So I am a marketing intern of the Borgen Project and uh, today I'll briefly talk about the mission of the Borgen Project and its organization as a whole. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. Just for starters, can you, would you like to just jump in and tell us what the Borgen Project is? Or maybe how did you start? How did you find out about it? Okay, so the Borgen Project, uh, it's like a um, nonprofit organization to reduce extreme poverty globally. And we also believe, the, uh, believe in the power of congressional leaders when it comes to uh, current, current global issues. That's awesome. I mean, that's a mouthful right there. I'm trying to think, like, how does that actually work, which we'll get into, I'm assuming you'll share. So take us back to, like, day, actually, like, like a month before you started. Where, was this on your mind? How did it come across to you? Uh, honestly, I was just looking for, like, any marketing or, like, public relationship intern, and it didn't really, like, non-organization, non-profit organization wasn't my first choice when it comes to, like, Korea and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. However, the job offer was, it came to me, like, during quarantine, and I was reading into, like, their website and, like, the organization and stuff, and it just inspired me to do something like that. And I found that pretty meaningful. That's and awesome. I was also um, inspired by like few philanthropic events that I went to during school season. So, yeah, I wanted That's to do something cool. to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> We're the world, make it a better place. Hope we don't get copyrighted for that. Um, that's awesome. So this basically kind of was incubating while you were in college, while you're, and you're still at college. You're still in college, correct? Yeah, I'm in college. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Is this toward, you towards the end of your road or you, you, you're in the I middle somewhere? One, uh, one more year to go. One more year to go. Awesome. That's cool. And how's that been so far given the whole pandemic that's going on? Uh, I think I would say I like it more at home. You like it more at home? save more time like because you don't have to travel and stuff you don't have to deal with like the new yorkers on the train and everything else you know like everything is easier like i know like people like to go out and they like it better when they go to like school physically but for me i i think i'm fine i'm trying to stay sane you know? i mean i mean we're doing the best that we can right that's good yeah, obviously <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing so so think about I'm just thinking about like other people like the people that you serve as far as this nonprofit is concerned right they're also dealing with a pandemic of some sorts right maybe maybe not to the degree that we are but may, or maybe worse who depends um, not too sure what the statistics are right now but I know your site does post statistics is that correct as far as the cases That's correct yeah that's if cool. I do have the website, or I can send it to you later, so you can link it below your YouTube bio. Yeah, not a problem. Sure, do check it out because we do update. We do have like updated numbers of Corona cases in different yeah. countries. So pe if people are interested, you can take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are some other things that uh, the Borgen website at least um, offers? I notice there's a magazine there, a blog. Do you know anything about that? There are like definitely a lot of details on the website and I do, I did like, did a focus group before to ask about like people's opinions on the website, like do they like it or somewhat, like some people thought it was worthy, but some people thought it was informative. So get, they get to learn a lot more about different issues uh, around the world and why it, why is it impacting us on the daily or like the economy in the US. So yeah. Oh, so both, so both aspects, like culturally both, yeah, and both economically. Aspects, yeah, they're like connected with each other, basically. Makes sense. It's a multifaceted system going on here. Right, right, right. So with this focus group, um, did, I guess from your experience, did you see, did, you, did most people know about these issues? Or were they, they kind of like in the back of their mind, but they really didn't know maybe the statistics about it? They probably wouldn't know much statistic about it, I would say, because... Nowadays, people's like focus more on the social media. They don't really like care about you know what's on the news until this pandemic you know came. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's just sharing different news and stories on their social media, but no really like share stuff about like extreme poverty issues. Which is why like today I wanted to like talk about it and okay. so people can learn about this, yeah, or be what? more aware of this um, thing that's going on around the world. Well, that's great. Yeah. And you, do you also deal with domestic as well within the States or, or just, or is it just international for now? 
it's more like international, so it will be focusing more around uh, Africa, especially, and also like any other like third world countries that are like struggling from this. Okay. So let's open it up a little bit. Like, how does the, the how does the Morgan Project define poverty, in your from your experience? Mm. What are some of the factors? Because I don't want to assume that everywhere experiences the same type of poverty or the same causes for poverty. So I actually was reading one or like watching one of the videos that they uploaded on the blog. It was saying how like most Americans think that 25% of the foreign aid goes directly into like the International Budget Affairs Act to help out third world countries. But in, 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 the, real, uh, in the reality, it, less than 1% goes to the foreign aid. So, wow. Yeah. That's shocking. So 25, That's, out of the 25, only 1% goes. That's less crazy. Less than 1% sometimes. Less than 1%. Wow. Yeah, compared to like, compared to like the, they're spending on like military and stuff, mm -hmm. it's a very huge difference. That's, that's interesting. So there, at least at one point, it was proposed to be 25%, but then somehow it's less than 1%. Do you, do you know possibly why that might be? It wasn't like proposed 25%. It's more like people guessed it. It was 25%. Oh, okay. So most people assume that we donated or like we helped them out more. But in reality, we didn't really like do much compared to like other countries because we're not even like up there when it comes to like foreign aid and stuff. Interesting. Do you know any other countries that, um, that beat us in that area that we know for sure? Uh, no slight to America, just curious, you know. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I don't know either, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was like a lot of countries, because like, I was just like literally reading it through, and like, I know United States didn't even do enough when it comes to stuff like this. That's interesting. At me, as a, as a citizen, I'm thinking like, damn, I didn't know that either. I didn't, I didn't know it was even less than 1%. I assumed there was some magic number, you know. Yeah, and like, you know, the our president, Donald Trump, trying to cut it further more. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, why, why would we do that, you know? <laughs> every every um, administration has different um, motives, right? So, oh. <laughs> this administration has different motives, all right. Yeah, we actually have like the lowest, almost the lowest uh, budget for this coming year, like fiscal 2021 year. Yeah. Mm. So that's interesting. So in America, our defense budget is like, bam, and then our aid budget is like, yep. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you even see it on the bar. So. Can't so that's, see it. Probably like really tiny, yeah. That's good to know. That's good. To, I feel better <laughs> about this now. It makes me, you mobilized me just now. That's great. I want to like talk to people. So you said that your project, it deals with the congressional part of things, right? You reach out to right. like Congress people. How does that go? So I would say... Every single, like, if you want to, like, get mobilized or, like, mobilize, mobilize other people or, like, email or call Congress, it's very simple to do that, to be honest. It only takes, like, less than three minutes. Um, you just got to, like, go onto our website. There's a section called Act Now. I can also send a link to you later. So if anyone are interested to do it, they can click on the link on the bottom. So, yeah, uh, they can click on the Act Now section when they are in it, there's a lot of different legislative bills they can take a look. Whatever they're interested in, they can put in their address, their name, with to in order to find their uh, region, regional congressional leader. Oh, so it country. takes out all the work from, from yeah. you having to search down, who's my senator, who's my... Okay. You don't even have to write the email. It's already written for you. Oh, okay. So it's already, okay, like a template. That's awesome. And do you get to, cut? can you customize it? Can you like put your own little flavor to it? Like, hey, professor. I have a lot of time. Sometimes it allows me to do it. Sometimes it does not. Oh, okay. That's cool. So I know there's like um, sometimes a senator or a congressperson just in general, they have a system that filters out like mail that all looks the same. So mm -hmm. unless you make it like tweak it just a little bit, maybe in the subject line or something or the body paragraph, it'll just think it's spam or something. Oh, so. that's very interesting. So for like the congressional leader, they actually have like interns to check their emails for them. So every single emails that they receive, they read uh, whatever act that people want them to support or like co-sponsor, they would tally that down. So every tally that they get, the highest number, will get the most attention from the congressional leader. Right, 
Oh, I can't imagine. It's only so much time in the day to focus on everything, right? Exactly. Yeah, because technically it is kind of like a data source for them to see what people care about the most. Mm, that's interesting. I wish we got to see, I wish they posted it like on Facebook or something like, here's the top 10 things you guys want for, you know. <laughs> And one, and, and I'm just curious, like, where does um, poverty, like, what on what ranking is it? Like, is it like number ninety? Is it ten? Is it one even? Like, that's something that'd be worthwhile to know. I don't I even I, like. Yeah. I don't even know if they like post something like this, but we do have, but we did like list it like top legislative bills that we're focusing on, like mm -hmm. the COVID nineteen response act, for example. Uh, Dan comes with the uh, international affairs budget mm -hmm. i usually support that one the most because i feel like if every country does their best economically then mm -hmm. united states will do good as well yeah I we agree get a lot of like yeah trading partners from the past countries that we help out on yeah, it makes sense right you know if you do better you know you can share that progress with someone else and they do better and hopefully a community of people are doing better yeah. so so it seems like i guess going back to my earlier question about what exactly is poverty like what exactly is it like what can we how do we define it like ourselves as, as just as someone who's just walking into this for the first time how do we obviously we know that there's rich people and there's people who are not rich right we know that we know that there's poor folk we know that there's rich folk and we know there's like probably some people in the large middle area which is very gray what that exactly means exactly if someone's making like a billion dollars here this person makes them 50 grand or 100 grand let's be generous 100 grand here like, 100 grand you know what i mean like what's a billion versus 100 grand it's like a totally so what's your take on that what do you think what are some of the aspects that make it um someone that's who's improvised i would say before i got this internship and actually like dig really deep into like all the information about poverty i usually actually no i assumed that poverty was just like the one percent in the US. I'm sorry, the 99% of the US. Oh, like, Damn. <laughs> Thank you. That is the rich people. It's for the rich people. But the 99%, I always thought about the 99% before this internship. And then after getting this internship, I was honestly amazed by like how many people are suffering because they are living under $2 per day. They can't wow. even have the access of like clean water, they don't even have electricity. They don't even have like a lot of thing that we take it for granted. Oh, for sure. Running water, electricity, um, doctors, just like in the healthcare just to begin mm -hmm. with. Even like, you know, for like women, we have like period every single month, menst menstruation. Yeah. I think you posted something on your Instagram about something like that. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Like, like I tended to like this PAT project, uh, philosophy events, mm -hmm. and it was saying how like, people in i believe india they they didn't have like the pads to use so like women were like struggling in that country and they would have to like drop out of school because of that because of like the constant bleeding and like nothing can help them so yeah i right. was i was just shook and feel like i took certain things for granted as american Right. I don't know in the U.S., but um, I, the reason why I keep going back to U.S. and forth, it's nice to see both sides of the coin, so to speak, and show people that we're really not much that different. You know, we all have the same needs, right? Like you said. Um, we have the same need, but everyone's, like, lifestyles are different. Everyone's have, like, completely different experience, especially right. in New York City, I would say, because di diversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone comes from a different background, but they're, like, there are like a lot of people that's, that's um, less fortunate as us. For yeah. sure. And I, I think at college is where I learned a lot of that information. Like I just meeting right. so many different people from uh, different countries that helped me broaden that horizon as far as like what really goes on in, in other countries, you know, and not all of it's all bad. Some of it's really, it's even better, you know? So it's, when it comes down to the bad stuff, that's the stuff that we're putting on Microsoft on, which is cool. So like you said, we take certain things for granted. Um, you mentioned, woman products right just feminine products like pads um i think the list can go on right i don't i'm not an expert in here so maybe you could, you could help me help you I, I don't know but pads is definitely one of them i know there's a period project i don't know if that's still a thing i know um it is for sure still a thing yeah, yeah. and the thing that you were mentioning was a documentary right 
Okay. There's a documentary and there's an organization just just to support that movement. Okay. Yeah, that's all. And I saw them making it. Like they were making them. Yeah, they're making okay. it. You were checking it out too. Yeah, they were like a Indian inventor. He was the one who invented like the whole machine to help these women out. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. And it's changed their life dramatically. The stigma has kind of gone away. Their their oh. their ability to do X, Y, and Z is good. So I mean, they have more opportunities yeah. now. So something simple like that. I mean, it's not simple in the grand scheme of things because we take it for granted, right? But um, there's other things, like you said, water, there's um, electricity, um, health. Was there anything else? Education, anything else that we missed? Possibly? Education, for sure. Like, women get less, less education compared mm -hmm. to men. And uh, people, mm -hmm. kids that are, like, under five years old usually die. From, like, diseases and stuff like that? There's hunger, mostly. Hunger? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. If it's, like, talking about, like, the main reason... Mm -hmm. why there are like so many deaths among mm -hmm. like dirt world countries hunger is like the major one mm. have you ever seen those commercials where it's like they're very similar you have like a aspca commercial with dogs and they show the dog like in the shelter and it's like crying and it's like donate five dollars and then they have the same a similar one that has human beings in it and they're pretty like much. vaguely they're like pretty much the same just different subject and it's like what's your thought on those types of productions i know they're there to like invoke you to pay money for a subscription or something like that but i noticed i didn't get that sense on the borgen project as much can you speak a little to that maybe it's just a different tactic to to go about it so the founder of the borgen project actually believe there needs to be more attention on extreme poverty from the political side mm. So they want more political focus on this, basically, because at the end of the day, there are like 99% of us that are like poor and not a lot of people would love to help on certain issues. And if the government can help us on this, it will be much more easier to build relationship with other countries, much more easier for um, for people like millions and, you know, millions of people to get out of the poverty. I would, I would like to word it that way yeah. okay thanks mm -hmm. so this is so it's a political approach more so than yes. a just throw money at the situation approach which you've seen dozens of times from different organizations and they kind of doesn't are. work it works but it doesn't work depending and sometimes it's corruption i mean that's another thing i wanted to ask you about kind of like yeah you know. they're like or yeah they're like organizations for like corruption and stuff, it, it does happen in certain countries, of course. Like I don't, I wouldn't deny that. But when it comes to like organizations, you want to find out which organization to donate because when when they send things over to like another countries, right? It could they they could be charged a lot because of like maybe taxes. Like I have no idea. But yeah, like some of the money that you pay taxes, will have, you can you kind of use it to help someone out there that are like dying because they don't have food for like, I don't know how long. What are some tips that you can give someone who's jumping into this? Um, as far as like making sure they pick the right organization or just, or maybe encourage them to do more of the research. What were some things you would tell them? I would say probably do more research. I am not like too familiar with this topic, honestly, mm -hmm. but I do know like Pro uh, Borgen Project, they send people to volunteer in every country to build a, you know, a well or wall, like mm -hmm. for water and stuff. Oh, yes. Okay. For, like clean water, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they send people there like every single year, whoever wants to volunteer, they can use those money and budget to build a facility that help people in the communities. That's cool. For whatever they particularly need, or I'm assuming that. Right. Mm -hmm. And every, like you said, every place ha might have their different um, issues, right? One might need water, one might need maybe clean water, for example, or electricity mm -hmm. or whatnot. That's cool. So, um, so, so can you take us inside a little bit? Like you are an intern there, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how, how is that like? Is, when, was this before COVID that you were able to maybe meet people and maybe see the facility? How does it work? Mm, that was after COVID. So after COVID. I usually contact my my higher up, like my supervisor and like other coworkers via Gmail or sometimes Zoom meeting. Then I get to see like what they what they're talking about, like regarding to 
things that we should do to make it make everything better and easier for us. That's cool. So you feel like it's been productive or progressive at least? It's been, yeah, it's been productive. And like one of our goal is to raise like $500 over like the course of 12 weeks. I found that kind of challenging at first, but after you just, you just go all out, you know, make a video encouraging people to donate and stuff. Mm. Yeah. People are willing to help out. And I was really happy about that because they trust me as a person and they, they just help me <laughs> just because of me and they want to do something to help out like things like this. Right. That's cool. I mean, it's always nice to, to be part of something that's bigger than yourself. And it seems like you stumbled upon this because um, you exactly. said you weren't, you, this wasn't in your sight at first. So. It wasn't in my sight at first. And I do know, like, you were talking about, like, commercial, like, donate, donating commercial before. Mm -hmm. We don't really do, like, donation commercial. We only encourage people to donate if they want to. So we have a page for like donations and we do have a page for like every single intern uh, fundraising profile that you can donate to. Yeah. Or you can just donate it on the website, as I said. Yep. Right. Yeah. That was the biggest like stark difference that I noticed from like other websites where it's like some websites, it's like donate. The first thing you see is like donate, donate. Right. And then you get the mail and then like it gives you like a subscription thing. Like if you just join here it's like very cringy, right? And then, you're, it's cringy. yeah. And then Borg website, I don't know, maybe they just hacked, they just hacked the psychology. They said, we're not going to do that. So it doesn't, I don't get that feel. Like, I guess when our listeners watch this, they can go check it out and they can have their own opinion about it. But I didn't see that. I didn't even see, I don't even remember there being like a, a push to donate when, even when I went to go watch the videos, I was like, are they gonna, when are they going to ask me? I'm like waiting, I'm anticipating for them to ask me, like, just donate, just donate. Like I was watching this one video just before we started where the person has to uh, mobilize like 30 or 50 people and they show different people doing the same exercise and go into the Congress people. I'm like, that's cool. I get to see what they're actually doing. That's awesome. So, and I was looking at reviews and stuff, like just on Glassdoor. I'm like, I'm just trying to see what the inside scoop is, right? And trying to figure out, okay, it's got to be some dirt, right? So I look, 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 look. One person's like, oh, this is such a bad experience. And I'm like, wait a second. This looks like I saw this before. I look up. I'm like, it's the same thing, like just post it again. And then yeah. sometimes the good things too, like some of them put, oh, I think they're just hiring people to write nice things. I'm like, well, there's a lot of nice people. <laughs> it's like a lot of people there brainwashed it to write nice things for. So I'm like, what's your take on that? Do you, do you feel like... Obviously, hum uh, corruption is just a thing of the human nature, and it's bound to happen somewhere, some way. But there's always checks and balances, I would hope. Do you get that feeling when you work with these people? Do you feel like, ah, something's off? I feel like I'm doing great stuff, but I feel like something's a little off. Mm, I wouldn't say, like, a little bit off, because, like you said, like, before I jump into this internship, I did a lot of research, I read a lot of okay. reviews. There's, like, very mixed reviews between, like, between right. people. And some people didn't like it because you have to like fundraise and raise $500. Right. And like some people really like it because it is actually the experience that they need, you know, whenever, wherever you want to go for to any industry or field. Mm -hmm. For me, it was, you know, marketing and public relationships. Some people go for a political intern. So yeah, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's a scam. <laughs> I don't think so. It's just more like mobilizing because I did ask my manager on that question before. I was like, if I didn't raise five hundred dollar, like, am I still gonna get the internship certification? Mm -hmm. And she was saying how like, no, the purpose for this organization, even when we're doing fundraising, is to get the words out to get to raise awareness around your communities and around your circle of friends and families members to help, but uh, help this, yeah. Well, that, that gets rid of some stress, right? It gets some people to sign up, right? <laughs> like, okay, they're not going to get rid of me just yet. All right. But that's awesome. It seems like it seems very mission-based, which is kind of cool. Um, you, you rarely see that even if they do have a good intention. So I'm glad that you asked your, you said your manager that, which is, I, I would have been kind of nervous. I, I, I kind of thought that in my back of my mind. But you just said yeah, something to I me. I think it's... Nervous. Yeah, I was nervous and anxious at first. <laughs> Right? I would only imagine it's your first time. It's not really a thing that you do often, you know? It's not like you just, you know, um, it's not like you knew about it, right? Um, to, like, a greater extent that you know now. So I was like, the reason why I hashed this out a little bit is because I want to know, like, if someone is watching this, thinking about doing what you're doing, 
what are some of the emotions that they've gone through, which you shared today, which is kind of cool. So you just help, I think, hopefully our listeners can take this away as far as like an empowering moment, just asking questions, researching, um, and just trusting your gut and just trying to see where it takes you. And, and maybe it's based on your performance, based on what you bring to the team. Sometimes people join an internship and they think everything's going to be handed to them. Um, or they, they like the magical experience is going to come from down the sky and it's going to do something special for them. And a lot of times those are the people who don't really grow, you know, and most of the time. And for you, it seems like you're just making the best out of it and you're trying to align it towards your major and you're just moving forward. With it. So thank you for sharing that. Um, is there something that you wanted to share regarding, let's see, how would I put this? Um, the process. They said it's very. What's they said is very competitive. How does one prepare for something like this? Uh, for the from the review that you were talking about. For the inter for the internship. Yeah. So they they of course they selected the candidate that they think that will fit the best okay. for their organization. That's for sure. And they look at your resume first. If they think your resume are fitted, then you're gonna go on to like a person interview, okay. maybe after the pandemic or like. Mostly, probably they're gonna do it virtually for an interview because it is um, their headquarters. It is in Seattle, California. Yeah, it's, it's a bit way <laughs> for a New Yorker like us. Yep. Okay. So well, this is yes. good. So anybody who's listening now, you know. Okay, yeah, good. it is a virtual internship, so you get to choose a time when you want to work, mm. and when you don't want to work. That is what I like the most because. I don't like a set schedule for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about other people. Like maybe some people like a more like structural schedule. Like, I don't know, but that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, you just got to spend like 12 hours every single week. Make sure you complete the test, be patient. And for on like the fundraising part, the best advice I can give is that don't be ashamed to ask people to donate because you're technically asking money for other people, not for yourself and not for your own goods. Like, of course, at first you're gonna be like, you know, kind of embarrassed because it seems like you're asking for money. Like, oh, you know, give me some money so I can buy certain things, you know, but yeah. Just have the mindset that you're asking for others and you're doing something great and you're also making a progress in this internship and that's your best, I would say that's my best takeaway. I would not, I didn't believe, or at first I didn't believe in myself. I didn't knew that I could raise over $500 within just two to three weeks. And that was like the most memorable experience that I have in this internship. Because it's like, it gives you like a confident boost Okay. It's like, wow, I did this within three weeks when you're supposed to, you know, use 12 weeks. Like, me, hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Start coming out, waving at people. <laughs> like, yeah, it's me. Wait, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so can you take us to the first time you called somebody? Can you, can you, you, can you share the, that experience with us as far as, like, the first time you had to ask someone to donate, right? To donate. Do you remember your first call? I didn't call people. Oh, you did it. So how did you do it? <laughs> I used my Instagram platform. <laughs> oh, smart, smart. Okay, so you have your Instagram. What, you did a story, I'm assuming? or So I'm a really um, shy person sometimes. Okay. And yeah, like, but if I'm a shy person, how am I going to ever do this? Like, I was just thinking, like, in the back of my head. So I just came up with the idea of, like, making a video, post it post it on IG story to see who wants to donate. Mm -hmm. And I also talk to like some of my friends about my internship and see if they're interested to do it. And some of them are actually willing to help me because you know, they trust me. And I feel like when you trust someone, you're willing to help them. It's not like any strangers just come up to you and be like, Oh, do you want to donate money? <laughs> so that was, that was yeah. what I have in my mind. Yeah. Okay. So that, so you, you kind of took like a, a different route, which I thought was very clever of you. So that's cool. So anyone who's trying to do it non-phone way, you have another option. Here you go. You have another option. There are like a tons of methods you can raise like for this fundraising campaign. Mm -hmm. um, one of like one of the methods that I read is like, you know, baking, baking like brownies. Or oh, okay. like, 
Where just to it? sell it. It's like the traditional fundraising campaign that you that you can mm-hmm. see in your school. But you know, pandemic happened. I didn't have the chance, so I have to come up with a new way. And social media, it's a trending way, and that's what I did. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, at least you didn't have to dress up like a shark or something and spin a wheel or something to get people's attention. So that's good. That's good. I dress. I dress really normally. <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah, please take a sip. I know it must be hot by you too. So <laughs> I'll talk while you're doing that. So thank you for sharing your first call, right? And it seems like you got a, like you said, a confident boost. You're you're good to go now. Do you see yourself feeling eager to do something bigger? Like in terms of what? <laughs> um, great question. I mean, take it to the next level. What would that be like for you? That would be regional director. They actually sent me an email and gave me that offer. And I have to decline it because I have to go back to school and find another internship. Okay. It gives me a different experience and perspective. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting and I would say meaningful internship. It's not just an internship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like while you're helping yourself, you're also helping others. And yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I got some questions. Um, I got some random questions about this nonprofit stuff. Let me see if I can see anything right here. I'm really bad with numbers, but I will try my best. <laughs> <laughs> These are totally off the page. Just real quick. Uh, you can do yes, no. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. As far as motivation, what motivates you to do this? Like, this is like everyone has to work. They have to like it's like so many different things that come to, as far as life is concerned, right? You have like 10 responsibilities, right? What gives you the energy to add that one extra thing to the everything things that you do? Thinking about the future and what you want to achieve. Okay. Like no matter, like if you think about the future and if you have a vision of something that you actually want to do and what the person that you want to become in the future, like just do it. Like don't think about like, don't even think about, oh, I would do it tomorrow or like I would do it the next day. No, do it now because the only chance that you have is the present. So you better do it now. So that way you become whoever you want to become in the future. Damn, I just felt like I got an Instagram quote. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Positive vibes out of here. You know, my guests are amazing. I just want to give a round of applause. Of course, I deal with negativity sometimes too, but everyone deals with it. It's normal. It's life. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Well, how do you how do you deal with it? Given that this is such a big thing in your life, how do you deal with something that doesn't go right your or doesn't go your way? How do you tend to um, balance that? Um. I would probably have, I would probably like maintain the mindset that it's just not your time yet. Sometimes you probably didn't get the internship that you want. You probably didn't get the job position that you want, but it's just very important to remember that maybe you're not good enough as compared to other people. Mm -hmm. Maybe this position is just not for you. Like you're not the best fit for that position and that's okay because everyone has something that they're very good at and something that they're not as good as others. And you just gotta be patient, just gotta do your best. And when the opportunity comes, you catch it because you're already prepared for it. Nice, nice. Are you thinking about doing motivational speaking after this? I should, man, I should. (laughs) I should, I should. I'm just tooting your horn here. (laughs) One of my mentors, she was like, maybe you should be like Mm -hmm. a counselor or like a psychologist or psychologist. And Mm -hmm. I was like, nope, I like marketing better. (laughs) I'm into marketing. It's like, it got the little psychology in there. I can work with that. I like the creative side. Yeah. That's interesting. So you're, you're, where are you going to school right now? Mm. CUNY and within CUNY or outside of CUNY? CUNY Baruch College. Okay, great. So far, most of the people that I've interviewed have been to CUNY at one point in their life or mm-hmm. teach at CUNY. So this is... How um, was it? Like, what, what did they say between, like, CUNY and SUNY? Uh, most people, let's see, most people, the only person I know who was outside of CUNY so far was the, my professor that I interviewed. Um, she, I believe, was out mid, in the Midwest. So she had came from, like, the middle middle state i think ohio not ohio but maybe like montana i could i think i'm totally messing this up sorry nancy <laughs> um, Isn't it like really annoying like you have to drive everywhere you go 
Yeah, I mean, that's the luxury of New York City, right? We get to just hop on a train or a bus or literally just walk down the block and we're good. You know, everywhere yeah. else, like... I mean, I'm a city person. Like, that, there's a reason why I did apply for SUNY. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. I get it. I totally understand. It's a lot of reason why people come here. Right? A lot of people I know are actually leaving, too. So it's just kind of like... Because they're not getting the perks of the city because everything's quarantined. So it's like, oh, man, I just live out there. And then I could just at least, I don't know, walk in a forest or something. I don't know. Like people, people have weird... And plus, also financially, it's just a lot cheaper to live elsewhere than here. Especially if you're not getting the, the perks of living here and stuff like that. Yeah, understandable. I guess, like, city is not for everyone. You're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like with, your, with the internship that you're in now, do you feel like it's harder? Do you feel like people tend to be more generous as far as donating or you feel like people tend to like, oh no, I'm just going to save this for a rainy day just because, you know, it's crazy. Like, what's been your take so far on this? Um, I feel like those who really want to help, they're very generous. Like, they would donate like $50 to me, $100 to me. Wow. Like, um, those who like wants to help me on this matter or like wants to support this issue they will like donate small amount to be honest i don't really care like what kind of amount that you donate as long as like you're helping and like you have the heart to do something like this yeah that's very touching to me too like when i first got my first payment for donation i was like that's my that's my real friend (laughs) but yeah you said there was way, other ways to, to contribute. Um, I think you said that earlier on. Do you, do you want to just highlight some of the other ways that people said, say you don't have money. What are some other ways that you can be part of this? Um, so social media, to be honest. Okay, like sharing and reposting. Sharing and reposting. Okay. Like, yeah, like there's like a lot of movement or like stuff that's happening in New York City or even the whole world. Like, people are just, like, sharing news about it to raise awareness uh, on this matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, I would say if you don't want to, like, make any donation or, like, if, you know, if your financial doesn't allow you to do so, mm-hmm. you can always learn some, like, basic advocacy skills. So some of the basic advocacy skills that I learned is just, you know, email and call the Congress. That's it. Like, that's very simple. Yeah. Like you said, it takes, like, three minutes. All right. Less than less than three minutes sometimes. That's awesome. So, given that, which is cool, people got options now. Um, what is like the number one thing that's that the the project is dealing with like, like currently? Like, what's one of the issues that they are dealing with currently? I know you said poverty before, but is there any like minute um, situation that they're really focused on? Uh, like I or, said, the COVID nineteen response act. COVID nineteen. Okay. Girls in school act. Uh. What was the other one? Oh, I forgot about that one. Give me one second. Let me pull onto the table. <laughs> no problem. I'll, I'll make sure that this, I'll condense this. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, let's get back. <clears throat> okay. So a little bit of context. Um, so far, people just know that you are in a CUNY school. They know that your major is marketing. Is that correct? Or is it something? Marketing. marketing. Yes. Are you, are you, do you have double major or something or anything like that? I was thinking about like pursuing something out after the bachelor degree, so maybe like, okay. more like a master's or master, yeah, or another master okay. in fashion school, maybe master in like just business school. I see, I see. And what what's your motivation there? What are you trying to achieve? <sighs> trying to be a CEO in the future. Yes, it's okay. Me to. Okay, That's cool. Cool. Yeah. My mom usually just be like, you know, you don't have to work so hard. You don't have to be too ambitious because she's just worried about me being too tired. Wow. A mom saying that, it means that you're probably doing a lot. <laughs> Most moms are like, come on, you got to do X, Y, and Z by this time. And like, oh, okay. okay. I know there are like kids out there that like work harder than me. And yeah, yeah respect for everyone that's grinding. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. What keeps you motivated to do all that stuff? Is it just self-will or is it just a moment in time that really shaped you? Self-will, moments in time, everything. Like back then, I didn't really care much about my mm-hmm. academic performance, didn't really think about my future much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I grew up after going through something. Right, right. And you just uh, live life, right? Just live life as it is. Live life the best you can. 
Oh, that's great. I, I think you left the audience with enough nuggets to kind of just like mine later they, on. They can you know, they can <laughs> relate. I, I believe they can relate. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna leave you with one last question, maybe two times, if you have time. One question I have um, is what will be something that what would be something that you told yourself um, when you first started? What would be something that you would like to say to the I, I don't want to say younger you because you're like the same age. So I guess pre-COVID or, or what, what would you tell Alice? What would you tell her? That sounds so weird talking to you a third person. But what should, I don't even know. If you had to write a letter to yourself right now, what would you, and you somehow had a magic machine, like a time machine or something, and it sent it back, oh. and you got it in the mail, and like, oh, what's this? Oh, it's for me. Oh, okay, let me read it. <laughs> Not before COVID. Like, I wouldn't write myself a letter. <laughs> the thing I'm actually very proud of myself. <laughs> never been so proud in my life. I would uh, say of writing a letter, of writing a letter. Never been so proud. But okay. if it was a younger me telling about my older self right now, mm -hmm. I would say you shall work harder. <laughs> you should plan an internship earlier. Work harder. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. And my last question is: If your life was made into a book, I know your life is still going. But if your chapter of that book, what would you name it? You can't use the last answer. That's cheating. <laughs> should I? What should I use it? What would you use it for you? Great. I like the throwback. All right. Uh, what would I say for which question? The first one or the second one? Um, both. I'm Give me some time. inspiration. I'm maybe killing some time. time to yeah. If I had to write a letter to myself, I'll make sure I type it because my penmanship is horrible. So <laughs> I want to make sure I can read it. So I would probably type it out and I probably would tell, tell myself, hey, um, even though you might be concerned about X, Y, and Z, there's always going to be a concern out there. There's always going to be an anxiety or a future threat or um, that's some kind of, kind of dangerous. <laughs> um, just something along the lines of something to worry about. And it doesn't make sense to stress yourself out all day. You know, if anything, stress yourself out for those five minutes. Get it out of your system. Do whatever you got to do for those five minutes. Get it out. Or write it out. And just don't let it affect the rest of your day because there's going to be people that are looking looking to you for just to, as a model. You know, whether you know it or not, there's going to be people that are looking up to you. There's going to be people who just who benefit from your productivity or just your positivity. And that's what I'll tell myself for the first question. Um, I like how you switched it on the interviewer. That was great. Smart move. <laughs> and then uh, second to answer my second question. Uh, let me let me be a future recruiter for <laughs> For um, you're hired. You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> I like that quality in you. <laughs> this is the interview, actually. <laughs> and my second question is if, um, oh my goodness, I, I'm, I'm totally brain farting right now. What was my second question? Oh my God. <laughs> Do you remember? Alice? You know, it's not even that. Oh, if, I, if I, my life was made into a chapter. Memory of goldfish. Ah, oh, goldfish memory sucks, man. Social media is killing my brain. All right. If my life were named into a chapter, hopefully I said that grammatically correct. Oh, the, I don't know. the title of the book. Title of the book, but the chapter. I would say, keep moving. Um, that would be my. That might. That would be mine. I think you inspired the title. So I'll, have I'll, you ever seen like calendars and journey journals that mm. they carry on? Something carry on. Keep moving and carry on. Keep moving and carry That's on. Oh, like the I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, those are the best. Carry on, yeah. Do you have a planner? Like, I know that you're a pretty busy person. Like, do you do you have one? <laughs> I have one. I had oh, one. God. Uh, when the uh, during like school semester because I do have like a lot of stuff on my plate, especially mm -hmm. school semester. Right. I remember like before quarantine, every single day I would have like stuff to do. <laughs> like Tuesday, I would have like class, mm -hmm. school organization meeting class again, and then homework. Same thing for Thursday, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I just work nonstop. Right, you just got I Rihanna in the background. Yep, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, I forgot what I did, but I was kind of busy too. Right, so does it help to carry a or is it just there for looks? Some people carry just for looks. What do you, like? I never, do, I never do, I don't really do stuff for looks. That, that is too <laughs> heavy to carry for look. Mm -mm. <laughs> My like size is about like this big, so I some, nothing bigger than this usually. Oh, that's not too bad. Like mine was like, Ooh, like, like you put maybe 
A4, A4 size, A4 size, but pretty thick and mm-hmm. kind of heavy too. Kind of heavy. heavy. Like I would carry a phone for a look, but I would not carry a planner for a look. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't blame you. It's yeah. just, it's different when you have a planner versus like just notes on your phone or something. And plus like your phone could like die one day, you know, it's like, or I know it's in the cloud, but sometimes you just, you just need something physical like to throw at somebody just in case, you know, like it's in the book, you know, I saw it, I wrote it down. Maybe I would only like write my feelings down mm-hmm. inside like a journals or like sometimes planner, I, I like it. I like my planner as well because every time when you finish something, the sensation to like cross it out feels yes. it hits you differently. It's nothing compared to like your, your electric calendar. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah, so it's definitely more sentiment. You can draw in there, you can color stuff. You can, I don't know, put pictures, yeah. Like certain things I like to do with the traditional way when you deposit your check in the bank, mm-hmm. that hits differently from direct deposit you know yeah i don't know i feel like i take it i take my money more serious when i write it down versus when i type it in my phone like if yeah. i have a budget like if i have a budget yeah yeah, like, yeah 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 mm-hmm. that's gonna be okay like i'm a boss now <laughs> let me just sign my name for you so you can you can get this check that's right i mean yeah. so that's cool well thank you so much for sharing a little bit about yourself uh, a little bit about what you do as far as the boring project um, is there anything that you want to leave off with the viewers, our listeners, anything you want to say? Or any plugs that you want to do right now for the Borum Project? I would say whatever you just spoke about, mm-hmm. the questions that you were, that I was supposed to answer. <laughs> yeah, well, she dodged, by the I way, that's everybody. <laughs> that's how I felt. That's how I felt, but I'm really bad at expressing it. So thank you for that. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> yeah, I would say like, don't stuck on your anxiety and worries way too much. Like just, just continue to do your thing. Sometimes when you start to do it, you stop getting anxiety and you stop being so nervous. That's awesome. Right, because you were nervous at one point when you started, so that's great. Yeah, of course, like everyone's gonna be nervous. Of course, everyone's gonna have like anxiety, like, to begin with right. but sometimes certain anxiety helps you grow better helps you step out of the box helps you step out of your comfort zone and sure. that's how you grow like when if you never step out of your comfort zone you would never grow up no you wouldn't yeah. Yeah. unfortunately unless you're like that that breakthrough miracle prodigy person then like you break like you're a, uh, a weed that comes out to the concrete or something which is it'd be like that sometimes i i you have feel like, I have, like yeah. some experience like that <laughs> like i but didn't know how i was gonna do it point. but i did it everyone does this on t- some point be like hmm, yeah. you know what i am gonna change because something tragic happened yesterday mm-hmm. and you did i mean just with your phone call you said i did it i did it three weeks I down did. i did it i did everybody my first did. podcast <laughs> Is this your first podcast? This is actually my first podcast. Oh, that is awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. I, I don't know. I have to ask my other guests if that was their, if that was their first too as well. Well, that's great. I'm so happy to be the first. That's great. Well, I definitely look forward to any future stuff that you're working on. If you ever want to plug anything, if you just want to share what you're, what you're into or you just want to give advice to people that are coming up doing the same thing you're doing, by all means, this is the place that you can do it at. Um, we, we know each other. We're on social medias. So, I mean, it's not too hard to find one another. Um, like, might, we might have another section talking about, like, what's actually happening. With, that's correct. You know, with, like, poverty and why do we want to help out on this issue because it benefits us as well. Mm. With businesses, with economic in the U.S. So, yeah, we can talk about that, like, next time. Yep. Sounds good. I'm down for that. Today was just like the surface. We didn't even really, we touched just the surface. We just touched the surface, testing mm-hmm. the water. Yep. Yes. And this is our first podcast. So we, it is. It is. It was a build up to it. I like work with you again, actually. Likewise. Well, yep. I'm going to honor your time because I know it's, uh, our hour is official. Uh, mm-hmm. We made our hour. And um, I'm looking forward to doing this again. Okay. Sounds good. I'll see okay. you next time.